Hi everyone, uh, my name is Seth Tanner and I'm here to talk to you guys about the global positioning system. Uh, so we use GPS and satellite tracking everywhere. Military uses it and actually developed it. Scientists use it to track animals that they need information on. Um, worried parents probably use it too. Um, to find out where you are, they probably could ping you off your cell phone or whatever. Um, all, almost all modern cars have GPS receivers in them, even if they're not enabled with a navigation system. And pretty much all smartphones nowadays have them as well. And you can see this in your Maps app, for example. So GPS got its start in the 1960s through the U.S. Navy's program called Transit. This could be like the grandfather to modern GPS. The satellites they launched were what is called spin-stabilized, meaning they face the same direction. But it also came with a few problems, which include gaps in coverage and poor accuracy in navigation and position, which is generally a not good thing to do when you're in the military. So because of these problems, in 1973, the U.S. Air Force developed their own system, which they called NAVSTAR, which stands for Navigational Satellite Timing and Ranging. Now, this is the first iteration of the modern GPS. And they developed this to find lost soldiers and calculate launch trajectories of missiles from moving platforms. Now, in 1989, the first GPS Block 2 satellite was launched, and this opened up um, GP, the GPS system for limited civilian use. They were worried that people would use the GPS for bad purposes. But then in 2000, thanks to Bill Clinton and a bill that he passed, uh, GPS opened up for full civilian use. Now, each subsequent satellite series launched after that improved upon the last series, which includes improved design life and retro reflectors, which allow the satellites to be tracked independently of the radio signals they broadcast. Now, this first table that you'll see um, is just a listing of GPS satellite launches, including the different series that launched and the years that those series were launched. Um, now, if you look at the bottom, you'll see that 31 satellites are still in commission. This is important for when we get to how the science behind how GPS tracking works. So, where does GPS go from now? Well, GPS Block 3 is scheduled to launch starting 2017. These satellites are a major one-up over the current satellites in orbit, um, including a longer design life, so they don't need as much maintenance as the satellites right now. Um, new radio signals and higher power levels for broadcasting, which is important for getting readings. Much more accurate atomic clocks and increased signal strength and accuracy, which can give readings up to an arm's length away from the receiver. Now, the GPS satellites in orbit currently give a reading that's about 20 feet away from the receiver. Um, but with an arm's length away, usually a human could figure out where they need to go if it's less than three feet away from them. So what's with all this talk about receivers and radio signals and atomic clocks and broadcast frequencies? Well, the GPS system is comprised of three different segments, which are called the space segment, the user segment, and the control segment. The space segment, according to the U.S. Air Force, is a constellation of satellites transmitting radio signals to the user. Each of these satellites is worth approximately $150 million, and they orbit Earth at about 12,550 miles from sea level. So there are at least 24 active satellites at all times. Now, if you'll remember a couple of slides ago, I said remember the number 31. Well, that's because there are at least seven, or there are seven additional satellites for backup in orbit. But in 2011, the Air Force decided to change it, add th adding three of the backup satellites into the current constellation, meaning there are 27 active satellites and four for backup. So how do the satellites work exactly? Well. At any time, four satellites are visible to your GPS receiver, meaning they're above the horizon. Each one constantly sends its exact location and time via radio frequencies. And when your receiver picks up a frequency, it also determines the distance from the receiver to the satellite based on complex math having to do with the speed of light. But these are reliant on knowing the exact time that the frequency was sent. So to send it, the atomic clock was invented, which accurate, and it accurately measures time to the nanosecond, which is one billionth of a second. Now, the more accurate clocks in GPS Block 3 will be accurate to a fraction of a nanosecond. Now, there's the user segment, which consists of your GPS receivers. Whenever your receiver picks up the transmission of at least three satellites, it uses each of those distances to calculate the receiver's exact location through a process called trilateration. So, in the diagram to the side, each of the black 
dots represents a uh, GPS satellite in orbit above Earth, and the radius of the circles around them represents the distance from the satellite to the user, which you'll notice by the intersection of the three circles is located roughly around Cuba. Now, with only one circle, you could be anywhere around that circle, and your, your GPS receiver wouldn't be able to figure out where. But adding in a second circle, you could be at either of the intersection points on the circle. A third circle finally reduces any potential error in determining where exactly you are, send, figuring out your exact location. Finally, there's the control segment, which is comprised of control stations located around the world. These track this GPS satellites, monitor their transmissions, perform analyses, and send commands and data back to the constellation. Um, it's comprised of a master control station and a backup, which is located at Schriever Air Force Base in Colorado and Vandenberg Air Force Base in California, respectively. The, uh, the master control station performs all of the primary operations of the control segment, and it commands and controls the entirety of the GPS constellation. And then you have monitor stations, which they track satellites as they pass overhead and report their findings to the master control station. These findings include atmospheric data, range measurements, and navigational signals. So this next diagram is a map of the world and the locations of all of the different portions of the control segment. So in conclusion, GPS was developed to help primarily find lost soldiers and launch missiles, but it's developed into much more than that. Thanks to GPS, we have the world's most accurate clock in existence, um, as well as ways to find out where we need to go even if we don't know where exactly we're going. So yeah, thank you for watching.